So is it okay for Christians to smoke weed, listen to secular music, or live together before marriage? See, the problem with these questions is that they're not specifically addressed anywhere in Scripture. There's no place where it says, thou shall not do X, Y, or Z. So how do we navigate our faith with some of these ambiguities? Well, you could draw a theological line. You could argue for or against it. You could make a theological distinctive. Or you could stop trying to find the line and start trying to follow the Lord. That's why today I'm going to show you a dedicated life is superior to a lines defined life. Say it, bro. Today on Church Door. Author and rock for native John Ortberg said this. There is an immense difference between training to do something and trying to do something. Anyone who spends time training for a sport, a trade, or an artistic discipline will tell you that they did not arrive at excellence on their first try. No, it was after many times of trial and error that they were trained to better navigate their discipline. It's no different in our Christian walk. Ortberg rounds his thoughts out by saying this. Spiritual transformation is not a matter of trying harder, but training wisely. Trying harder is when you reduce your Christian walk to a list of do's and don'ts. Trying harder is when you check in on Sunday, but check out all the 167 other hours of the week. Trying hard is a transactional faith that finds yourself on your knees when things are difficult, but a ghost when things are good. So if this is what training hard looks like, what does training wisely look like? Well, this is going to be a hard one for some to swallow, but it, it's kind of a naughty word in our culture. It's the D word. You know it. Discipline. Now, I can hear some of you growing like, what do you mean? I need someone to smack me on the back of the hand when I do something wrong? No, what I'm talking about is your sustained ability to keep following after Jesus day after day. Training wisely is less focused on behaviors and more focused on the Savior. In other words, if I can dedicate my life to walk each and every day chasing after Jesus, rather than checking off a list of behaviors, the outcome of this practice will affect my behaviors. Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Listen, there are things that God will call you to lay down, even things that are not even in scripture, but God will call you specifically to lay it down. The big question is, will you do it? That's why I'm calling today's message, a dedicated life is superior to a lines defined life. So let me flesh this out just a little bit. A lines defined life looks at the superficial exterior items, the lines, the work that can be done and says, if I do that, maybe God will love me more. On the other hand, a dedicated life says this, you know, God has sacrificed for me, therefore I will dedicate my life to him. Every part, every relationship, every fast of my life, God, it is yours. Do you see the difference? If you ultimately don't love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, all the things that you will try to do to find favor with God will leave you wanting. I want that. Because the first time things go wrong, or God asks you to give something up, you will be mad. In Joshua chapter 24, Joshua is giving his final sermon to Israel. In doing so, there's a little bit of apprehension as if Joshua knows it's going to be hard for Israel to stay faithful to Yahweh, the one true God. Now, why is that? Well, their loyals have been in other places in the past. They'd worshiped other idols and other gods. It was plausible that they would do it again. So Joshua pushes in hard by saying this, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshiped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day who you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the God of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. In other words, if you're going to live a dedicated life, your devotion must be undivided. 
See, the real truth is, friends, there are a lot of people out there walking around with Christian as their label. But if you look hard enough online, anywhere, you will find all kinds of things that are mixed in with the Christian label. Christian tarot, Christian pornography, Christian cannabis, you name it, it's probably out there. Yet Joshua's message to God's people was this, there are not additives to the Lord. So you must choose either the idols of the past or the Lord. But as for me and my house, we will not have divided loyalties. My house will serve the Lord. Of course, there's a lot of people out there watching this today and you're thinking, Ian, I don't serve any other gods. Well, let's put that to the test. If you wanna know if your loyalties are divided, ask this question. If God asked you to give something up, literally anything, would you do it? No matter if it's explicitly in scriptures or not, if God told you to stop this in your life, would you do it? Your answer to this question is super telling about where your loyalties lie. If the answer is no, then you might just have idols in your life, something that you love greater than the Lord himself. Now let's step back for just a second. I mean, you might be thinking that just seems unattainable. What hope do I have in this scenario? Well, the truth is Israel, not much after that very last sermon that Joshua preached, they began doing what they always did, chased other gods. They wavered in and out of faithfulness until one day God gave them over to their enemies and exiled them from the blessing of the promised land. The story of Israel only serves to highlight the struggle that we all have. We all have divided loyalties. In knowing this struggle, God sent his son coming to live a perfect life in full submission to God, and in the end, dying in our place, taking the punishment for our divided loyalties and demonstrating his power over it by rising again. Those of us who call ourselves Christian, we also seek to lay our lives down in the image of Christ, just like he's done for us. Putting aside our selfish loyalties, that we might devote our life to his ways. And his way was to love God, and to love others. And by doing that, we fulfill every law that God has made. If you're watching this video today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, if you wanna give your life to him today, reach out to us. We've got a team of people here that wanna walk with you. You can text us down in the comments or you can text prayer to the number that you see coming up on the screen right now. Help us promote great Christian content by hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every single time we put out a piece of content, it's coming directly to you. Or you can go the extra mile by going to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and making a donation there. Every single cent that comes in goes right back out to help people just like you take their next step with Jesus. We're so glad that you've come to be here with us today. We pray blessings on you as you go into this next week. We're just now wrapping up our series in the book of Joshua. If you want to catch up, go ahead and hit that button right in the center of the screen to catch up with us. That felt good. That felt good. That felt good. Oh, my toe.